And probably some of y'all looking in the mirror right now in the spirit. Should I even say that? There are women nowadays that tell men all the time, why you keep a secret to me? You don't love me for real, but they want the secrets for knowledge in order to stab them in the back in the long run. Ain't no sequel. The last season, Moedine. Ain't no getting through them gates without that blood on you. I can tell he ordering my steps. Cause when the world said no, the father still said yes. I am fresh out of work, okay? But I just could not, okay? Listen to me. I could not let the sun go down without talking about Delilah first because we're gonna have to get some context without spoiling too much because we're gonna go full circle with this okay the reason why i am po'd with the lila story and just reading all over again was because here's what women need to do more is take accountability no i do not do this anymore but I, when i was reading the story i felt like i was looking in the mirror and I will tell you why later. Okay, just got the one version now. We're gonna go and start <clears throat> with Samson's story. It all starts in Judges 13. Samson is the son of Manoah. Manoah's wife, which is the parents of Samson, her name wasn't disclosed. But anyway, the angel of God came to her and said, you're going to bear a child because her womb was also closed and that he would be a Nazarite, okay? So just paraphrasing, the term of a Nazarite is a person who is consecrated to the service of God, meaning they grow their hair out, they don't drink, they don't partake in certain things, right? And you can go into Numbers 6 for the full context of what you need to do to be a Nazarite. Now, mind you, people have a back and forth type of thing, whether it's, you know, chosen and anointed or if somebody can just generally do it if they have the want and the desire and the discipline to. Okay. Use your own discernment when it comes to that. She was also told that he would deliver israel out of the land of the philistines or the philistines rulership god is going to say something or send an angel to indicate that this person is going to do this that and the third doesn't say how most times so that's when you see the story unfold and this is what happened with samson and Ooh, crazy Delilah. Side note, sorry if you hear stomping. I'm sorry if you hear the refrigerator. I'm, so, I'm in the living room, okay? I'm sorry if the acoustics are completely different. My apologies with the echo. With some time, because, you know, just thinking about context from Judges 13 to 14, Samson is now old enough to take on a wife, which he does, and it's a Philistine. She gets told from the Philistines to entice Samson to answer some type of riddle and only he knows okay so after some time and so forth it gets to the point where he eventually tells her and god sends down the wrath judges 15 we're going to jump forward because i want to get to the delilah part judges 15 samson tries to get his wife back which results <laughs> in the wife and the father to perish he got arrested and it was just a vengeful slaughter from there it's just like i can't have my wife back what are you talking about and he went in it is what it is he was a very strong man why because he was a nazarite there's a certain power in which that, you know, a lot of people say it's just the hair, you know, that's where the strength came from. Yes, that is true. 
However, there are other disciplinary things that a Nazarite does in order to gain certain strength. Now, mind you, the strength comes from God. No doubt about that. Okay? Because the way in which he went out, that's only God doing. So some more time must have passed by. And now we're in Judges 16. This is how Delilah enters Samson's life. Samson is in... Should I even say that term? Is in the land that rhymes with huzzah. Okay? Because I don't even know if I can say that term on this platform. So the land of that rhymes with huzzah. And he goes into a woman and that woman is Delilah. He loved her, right? This is what makes me mad. It's the part of the transactions that happened with Samson in the Philistines. It's like they had a beef from the beginning. Okay, now Samson, what was told to him or what was told on his life that he would be a person that helped Israel. Sorry for the barking. Not only that, it was two occasions in which Samson was going ham on people, you know, and he used even a jawbone to even more, you know? It's just like, who would think of that as a weapon? You know what I mean? But anyway, after that, he was a judge for 20 years. And this is when the situation happened with Delilah. The Philistines tell Delilah, entice him and we'll give you some money to find out where his strength comes from. So over some time, she, in a way, and this is where the accountability starts within myself. And I know other women still do this to this day. This is why I wanted to bring this particular story up. You have to take accountability for what is in this word. Look in the mirror and atone for it and repent for it. Please do so. Because if you don't, you, you win transgression and you win sin. And it is what it is. This is why. She, and this is for me when I started looking in the mirror, because even though it's not the same context in which she did it for and as opposed to what I did it for, it was the fact that she was saying that he didn't love her the way that he said that he did and so forth. Because if he loved her the way he said he does, you just got to tell me what causes your strength and so forth. Like, why are you so strong? You don't love me if you don't tell me. Why are you keeping secrets from me? Type thing. If you have not heard that from a woman before, and if you have not been a woman that has done that before, I'm talking about in the world. And once you repent, you know, that's not a thing anymore. I'm just saying there are women nowadays that tell men all the time. Why you keep it secrets to me? You don't love me for real, but they want the secrets for knowledge in order to stab them in the back in the long run. Now for me, it was for trying to help my significant other. It was trying to get to a point of clarity with the secrets and, you know, people not disclosing certain things and so forth. That would make me so, it's, and to me, it equated to you don't love me because why are we going through such trial and tribulation and you're not opening up to me? You don't love me, okay? I was a woman, I was, okay? And it took <laughs> three plus years, okay? To get to a certain point where I was just like, okay, well, I'm giving myself too soon of a thing. Four years, I gotta say. Took me four years to get that and to truly look at myself and be like, no, that, you know, that's not okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's the first point. Keeps happening. 
keeps happening, keeps happening. And she keeps putting up snares. And that's the thing that makes me mad. Why do you have to put up snares to try and get somebody to say something to you? And this is where women use setups. And if you don't know what a setup is, look it up. But I know somebody know that somebody always trying to set up somebody so that way they can gain something in the end. All for, you know, love or whatever, or the baby daddy or whatever. You already know somebody like Delilah, okay? And probably some of y'all looking in the mirror right now in the spirit. That's okay. Just know that you have to correct yourself and you have to literally repent and atone for that and not do it anymore. And if you are on that route of correcting yourself and so forth, please know it's a good thing. Don't let somebody tell you that, oh, you changed too much or whoop-de-woo. No, it's a good thing that you don't put the snares in place. It's a good thing that you're not nagging. It's a good thing that you're not telling people, trying to get your own way by telling them that you feel unloved. Now, there's a caveat. There are certain relationships or there are certain things and there are certain men that don't want to correct themselves as well to try and mitigate past pain, past trauma, past so forth within a relationship and you're trying to work through it. Some men simply do not help in that regard, okay? So the feelings of unloved can be justified, but I'm saying in a way you have to correct yourself in order to know how to maneuver in that situation, okay? It's all about accountability on both parts, but I'm specifically talking on the woman's side. She keeps doing it. That woman bothered him so much that his spirit was vexed to death. Vexed to death. This is why I said also that women cause so much sometimes when it comes to a man that they come to not. You vex that man's soul so bad that he finally had to tell you because his spirit was in turmoil with all the nagging that you were giving him. Am I sounding familiar to you? Do you know somebody like this? Or, you have, or have you even said this and those words out of your mouth yourself? Men, if you're watching this, have you heard a woman over and over and over and over and over again persistently telling you what you're doing wrong, persistently telling you what you need to do, persistently telling you that you ain't sh Not right. I'm only telling you this because <laughs> mirror, mirror. And again, context can be a little bit different because I'm not trying to weaken a man. She literally broke this man down. Okay, just to get a little bit of information because the Philistines had a beef with them. There wasn't even really a true reason. And on top of that, he loved her. That's the thing that makes it, he loved her. It wasn't like a thing. It wasn't just like a side piece when I stand, whatever may have you. He was rocking with her. He was trying, you know. <clears throat> so this led to him telling where, how, all the things when it comes to his strength. So she sent a man, now I know, which is why I <laughs> included it in the thumbnail. This is why I include the scissors, but actually, just as a matter of fact of scripture, that she, meaning Delilah, sent a man to shave Samson's head. It wasn't her, like, cutting, you know what I mean? The hair or whatever, it, she sent a man over, okay? And then she started to torment him again, saying, you know, they're outside, la, 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 type thing. She's the reason why his strength left and why God separated from him. And you know that too. You know somebody that was probably on the righteous end of things, that was trying to live a right life. I'm talking about a man We're trying, actively trying to find love, to do something. You know, even the dude, can I get a hug type dudes? Okay. Now for me, 
even though it's just like give me a hug type of dude to me the give me a hug type of dude is low key you know very in a way very tough in the samson type of way okay it's just like you have that stigma about men that just doesn't make sense because why wouldn't you want a good man why wouldn't you want somebody that's trying why wouldn't you want somebody that is trying to be on the narrow path but little did the philistines and delilah know okay you a paid actor low-key delilah a little charade to play with samson's feelings because he loved you and then you set him up please tell me you don't know somebody like that then after that with his strength being gone, his eyes get gouged out. Mind you, there is nothing contextually that's saying that Delilah was remorseful, that Delilah, you know, felt bad, that Delilah this, that, and the third as a repercussion. None of that. So it's just easy to assume that she didn't give from the beginning. She did not care. And that's messed up because a lot of women don't take that accountability and they just think they have to keep prodding and prodding the bear. They think they can keep poking the bear. They keep thinking that they can just do whatever they want without accountable actions. No. One day your ass gonna get got, period. If you don't repent and atone and change, do a 180 because if you not, God's wrath gonna be on you. And nobody wants that. And if somebody's just willing and being naive and like okay with it, then more power to you. I will pray for you. He gonna go out with a blaze of glory because little did, like I said, the Philistines and Delilah know his hair is growing back. I have known men, especially with beards, their hair, you know, especially if they get a fade or whatever, it grows back relatively quickly within a week two weeks okay so that power can easily come back over time okay again i'm not saying that the hair specifically in this case was the only reason why he had strength okay just look at it you got to read it for yourself to understand and do more research when it comes to being a nazarite he had one last task and this is where he strengthened israel and he was going to be the person at the time for Israel. About 3,000 people in a temple in which he was taken to, captive, imprisoned, shackled up, bound up. Mind you, eyes is out, gouged out. What? You mean to tell me you're going to blind me? You're going to weaken me? You're going to blind me and then you're going to bound me? You know how many people over a woman are incarcerated right now? Do you know how many people over a woman over a DV situation or a setup are sitting in jail right now over some bull i'm just like i'm putting i'm just giving y'all the real i'm just letting y'all know because since the beginning of time old testament since the beginning this stuff has been happening in the same spirit is still roaming around this planet today. I'm just having a forewarning that if you have a woman that's like that and you feel like it's just too much and you don't think she gonna repent. And if you're not telling her to repent, you're not telling her to atone, you're not telling her to correct herself and you're not telling her, she's gonna continue to do the same thing. And the same with the men, but I'm on the women right now. They're going to do the same thing. Just like men, they're going to do the same thing if you allow certain things, period. It is what it is. Because there is a certain thing that you can hold fast to and you could believe and so forth, but you have to change together. You have to repent together. You have to be on the road together. It will not work if one person is trying all their might to tell you to correct yourself and they're not taking it in. Even some cases, a lot of women don't take it in because I didn't take it in in the first couple years myself. I didn't, I wasn't, what? Huh? Ba -ra 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 -ra. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Nag, 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 nag. I have a standard for myself and um, 
a way in which I want to carry myself and what a family would look like to me and so forth. Yes, I have that standard because of what I was raised on, foundational values that I have for myself. So yes, I have that expectation. But when it comes to the extra nagging, when it comes to it's my timeline, not yours, you need to get together now and so forth, I'm just looking in the mirror. No, it doesn't go that deeply into it, but that is a foundational spirit that can blossom into this, that, and the third that I just mentioned. It's ridiculous. And I'm just willing to put my example out there because a lot of women won't say straight up that yes, I was like this too at one point at a time, but I have changed. Back to the task on why he was prophesied to do what he was going to do via God. Together, 3,000 people with Philistine. It, it, the scripture says he's leaning on the beams and, you know, just visually people can, you know, take it and interpret it several ways. But however he did it, whether he literally had the shackles and he pulled down or he leaned over or he pushed through or what he grappled on or whatever and cleaned on, whatever the case may have you, it caused the pillars to fall with his strength because he asked God and he prayed to God for strength right then and there. Please give me the strength, Samson said to the Lord. Then Samson called, and this is Judges 16, verse 28, following down. Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray, strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. Okay? So he praying for their destruction just because of his eyes. It's not because of Delilah. Why? Because he loved her now if the tables were turned the woman would have said oh because of samson i'm in this predicament and so forth if the tables were turned you know exactly what would happen if a woman was in this circumstance but no accountability with delilah exactly there is none that's exactly why i said the spirit is like that today there is the spirit of delilah everywhere in the modern woman, if you will, because I've heard that term many times. And literally, because a lot of people pray for strength in other ways. But no, he said, physically, give me the strength so I can take these pillars down and take the Philistines with me. Okay? Blaze of glory to me. After the temple falls, about 3,000 people and Samson perish because of it. Now, all of that could have been averted. All of that could have been not a thing. Because Delilah could have literally had a change of heart. But I guess the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Not money is the root of all evil just because the love of money, the chase of money, the covenant of money, you all think of money. So all you think about, get the bag. Bop, 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 boop, boop, boop. So she got the bag. And she said, bet, I'm going to entice him. I'm going to do what I need to do. And we're going to set this dude up. And we're going to do what we got to do. You know somebody like this. You know somebody that just trying to chase a bag. You know somebody that will set somebody up for this, that, and the third. And it takes less than this. 3,000 people plus a man perished because of his strength. Because y'all kept playing with him. That was real cold. You know what I'm saying? Crash poom back. Now, that was a lot. The reason why I pause is because I need y'all to understand the gravity of this and the seriousness of this. Why is that okay? Why is that continuing to be okay when it comes to the modern woman? I'll wait because I really want to answer. 
because this is the prime example as to why a man gets messed up and a man gets set up and a man can't do stuff no more and he comes to withering away because a woman just keeps on his neck. Now, mind you, okay, there are women that are doing that because of correction, because of love, because they're trying and because of this and the third, but there is a way you got to do it. This was on the left-hand side. This was so unrighteous to me. This was so bothersome to me. And when I had to look in the mirror, I was like, Ooh, this is, Ooh, I did this for years. Ooh, I did it for consistently and I was not tired. So I'm telling people, if you notice this about a woman that you're seeing or a woman that you're caring for, or if you're a woman and you're starting to notice things about yourself in which I just indicated, please know you have the chance to do in 180. And I'm not saying it's an instantaneous thing, but you literally have to every day pull that out of you. You have to every day cleanse yourself out of it. You have to every day atone for it until you actually start to see the action in which you're not having that spirit on you anymore. And these are heavy spirits. As I keep telling you, okay, since the beginning of time, and time's been here for a little while, okay? So when I say that the beginning of time, that spirit is on you, that is a very hard spirit to battle. You have to find a system and the system is in here on how to correctly do that. I don't know if I have that bandwidth to go into depth about it. Like the video if you guys want me to. All I know is you have to be real disciplined and this is not a just believe on Christ and have the faith. It is way more than that. These spirits is on you and you gotta fix yourself. You got to do a complete complete renovation within yourself and your soul because luckily for me I had somebody that cares for my soul you know what I'm saying and that is the only reason through the situations in which I was able to look at myself now mind you I've always been as I said a reflective person a self-reflective person but when it came to things spiritually I was not getting it in the beginning I don't even know how <laughs> at times I be speaking on certain topics myself because yes there has been a long time of me trying to literally correct myself on the right hand side okay and as people say hey, you know I'm a work in progress no that really needs to reign true in your life that really needs to be a anchoring point within yourself because this grace and this mercy is not going to last forever. So if you are a Delilah still, get right. Get right. Even the dogs agree with me. Get right. <laughs> Foo wee. And I was trying to do a two-parter. But apparently, I can't do that. So I'm going to see you in part three when I wrap this whole thing up. Because with this part two, it was about a power play with Delilah. It was all about a little, little cash situation. The foundational point with the first video of Dina and Lot's daughters, it's just a pattern with the women, you know? It's someone getting used, another using under the influence of substances, and then now it's a woman dealing with money and tapping into a man's feelings for no reason. Because you're just so surface level, yeah, give me the money. Cool. Set them up. Type thing. Not even think of the repercussions. So now in part three, we're going to talk about jail because just like Samson, she also strengthened Israel. And one can only hope as a woman 
to do something so courageous as she did. So if you want to read the story and then listen to me explain it, or you want to wait, that's fine. Either way, that's going to be part three. So until the next one, take care.